Okay, so now that we've got divergence down, what do we do about curl? How does the curl generalize to a 3D vector field? Well, it gets complicated. The curl is not a scalar field because we're trying to represent spin. And if you want to understand spin, then you've got to think in terms of vectors. The curl of a 3D vector field is going to be another vector field that again measures the infinitesimal spin or rotation that you have going on at a point. And that has both a direction and a magnitude, kind of like a vector. Now, it's helpful to think about this curl as being measured by some sort of spinner, where you insert this into the vector field at a point, and it spins around, and the direction in which it points is the curl with the magnitude being the amount of spin. That's the idea behind curl. What is the formula for it? Well, the formula is well, it's kind of complicated looking, but it has elements that are reminiscent of what we saw with the curl density in 2D. And in fact, if you think about what the formula is, it has as its three components, the three different circulation densities in each plane. So for example, the K component of the curl vector field is precisely the circulation density in the X, Y plane. Likewise, the I component matches the Y, Z plane. The J component matches the Z, X plane. This is where the formula comes from, and this is what it means. It's measuring three different circulations in three different coordinate planes, but you put it all together into a vector field. Now this makes perfect sense when you've got, say, a planar vector field. So no K component, no Z component. If you apply this formula, then what you get is that everything in the curl vanishes except the K component. So that means when you have positive circulation density, it's really positive K. A negative circulation density means that that curl vector field is pointed in the negative K direction. So you're going to have to go back and reinterpret what you learned about curl density in the plane as really being a vector field, but a vector field that points strictly in the K direction. Let's see an example where we're computing the curl of a vector field. Let's say the I component is negative Z plus X squared. The J component is X plus Y, and the K component is Y plus Z squared. Now, you can plug that into this formula, that's fine, but there's a, there's a bit of a hack. There's a nice way to do a computation without necessarily having to remember all of these terms. And this uses something that we already know, namely determinants. So let's take the three components of this vector field and pack it into a determinant of a three by three matrix where the first column is i, j, k. The second column is the differential operators, partial, partial x, partial, partial y, partial, partial z, and the last column is the three components of the vector field, fx, fy, fz. Now, what? What is this? I mean, this is a matrix of what? You got, you got vectors, you got differential operators, you got components of the vector field. Gosh, what a mess. Yeah, it's kind of a mess. We'll explain the notation soon. For now, let's see that this formula is effective in computing the curl and that it matches this formula. So if I take the components of this vector field and pop that into the third column of this three by three matrix and then start computing the determinant, how do I do that? Well, the I component is partial FZ, partial Y minus partial FY, partial Z. That gives me just a value of one. Likewise, with the J and K components, I use, say, minor expansion for this determinant or whatever method I want. And what I will get after some computation is that the J component is equal to negative one. The K component is equal to positive one. And what that means is that my final answer for the curl of this vector field is simply I minus J plus K. This is interesting because it's a constant vector field. It's not changing. That means that you're always rotating about the same axis with the same rotational strength. That's really kind of cool, but it's also kind of particular 
to this vector field. Because in general, uh, vector fields aren't going to be like that. You're going to have a vector field that's all swirly and crazy and it's moving around. And even in a nice circumstance where everything is, is roughly speaking rotating in the, the same general orientation or direction, when you go to compute the curl of that vector field, your vectors might all be pointing in, in different directions. They might have different lengths. Now, because the curl is a vector field, you can think of its flow lines. That might be helpful as far as visualizing what's going on. But in general, wow, curl is really difficult to visualize. It's hard to make sense of how the original vector field and its flow lines interact with or relate to the vectors in the curl. Don't be discouraged. Visualization is always difficult in 3D, especially so for vector fields, especially so when you've got two vector fields sort of competing with one another. Remember what the curl really means. Remember how to pull your two-dimensional intuition up to 3D and try not to be discouraged. It's a beautiful idea and also useful.